Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Ah, right. Now, we have coffee, we can begin the video. So today, I'm over here, as you can see, in the barn. I've now aeropressed myself a nice mug of joe. Sainsbury's is a really nice Japanese brand coffee, which is very tasty indeed at the moment. I'm with the Punto, the oldest Punto in Great Britain, according to the Fiat Owners Club. So who am I to argue with them? I believe them. They sold it to me, so I'm sure they've got nothing to hide. <laughs> I know they haven't. But no, the reason I'm here today with this car is because I've got a stash of bits and pieces on the floor over here, which I've had actually for a few days um, and I've not got around to doing it. We've got oil, we've got an oil filter, we've got a water pump, we've got a rocker cover gasket and we've got a cam belt because this car, although it has been sort of fairly well cared for over its uh, last few years since it was discovered by, bizarrely, a friend actually. Um, it's had a, various oil changes and things, but its cam belt is of indeterminate age. And also, when we did the walk around, look at it a couple of weeks ago, we found that the rocker cover was seeping oil down the front of the engine, which is making it a little bit unpleasant. Now, obviously, with, as with any engine at all, a regular oil and filter change is essential maintenance. So we're gonna do that, as has been done by the last couple of owners anyway. Uh, it's definitely due for one now, though, because it's been over a year since its last change, but it hasn't done many miles, so we should be fine with that. The water pump, uh, because this is an original radiator and a lot of original pipes and fixings and things, I'm gonna change that as well, because it's probably the original water pump, and you never know, and I don't want all this stuff to break and overheat or anything at all. But what a lot of people do, apparently, is with these fire engines, because it's a non-interference head, they will run the car until the cam belt breaks and then just fit a new one to save the bother and expense of doing it. However, that does mean you spend a day at the roadside waiting to be recovered and then an awful lot of faff and things done not on your terms. I'd rather get it done right now and over and done with. What I have just realized is that the lights are on the wall over there and this is the dark end of the room, so I'm gonna have to turn this car around. There we go, car's the other way around now and you can see what's going on because there are lights on the walls. Hurrah! I did bring a few bits and pieces over from home uh, to make this job go easier. Rather handily from junk in the trunk, a Fiat Punto workshop manual, and of course all the bunch of stuff that turned up in junk in the trunk this week for the Mini, so that can go and live with the Mini. In addition to that, I also picked up a radiator from Mini Spares over on the Isle of Wight last week because the one that is, whoops a daisy, was in this car, didn't look too clever. In fact, I'm not even sure I saw a radiator when it came out, I can't remember. This one though, it was slightly reduced, no postage, and it's brand new and shiny. So that'll be lovely for the Mini there. I'm just stacking up bits already for a car that has got no hope of running anytime soon. So <laughs> that's how you do a project. You buy it, you take it apart, you buy parts for it, you drink tea, buy another project. That's basically how projects work, isn't it? So the day's got off to a bad start already because uh, this is a uh, Allen key style um, oil drain sump thingy. And I've only brought, or I've only got, a maximum of a 10 millimeter Allen key style hoo-ha dilly over here in the garage. And uh, the one in the bottom of the engine is about a 12 or a 14 or something like that, which means I can't take the drain plug out. So we're gonna put the uh, oil change on hold <laughs> And so we've failed on the easiest task possible, and we'll move on to the more complicated stuff, which I'm sure we can mess up even better. Now, rather fortunately, I did find this complete how-to guide to changing your uh, oil, not oil, water pump and cam belt on a fire engine. So, so this will talk us through it, and it doesn't look too hard. So we'll start off on the top of the engine with a couple of 10 mil bolts. Right, we'll start off with a nice easy one. We'll take the air box off, which is just a couple of 10 mil bolts. Somewhere I've got a little magnetic tray in this room. I don't know where it is. I've just spent the last 15 minutes hunting for my um, various sizes of socket. Uh, it turns out I left them hanging on the wall in a really obvious, sensible place. So go me for being an idiot. Things to disconnect there. Pull this to one side, and there we have one removed airbox. Oh, and there's our inlet manifold malarkey. Oh, do you know what? 
I didn't think to get an air filter for some reason. I don't know why I didn't bother to do that. But it turns out you can actually just wiggle this thing upwards and lift that away quite cleanly, which is nice. And I've got full unfettered access to the entire majesty of this enormous beast of an engine. Right, so let us work out what else we need to take off. We have to undo this plug here, apparently. That's a squeezy plug that comes undone like that. And we also need to undo, just unclip this little bit of trim stuff just here to make life easier getting these little wires out of the way. That can go on the floor. Just unclip this little clippy thing from there just to, again to make life a little bit easier in terms of access. Just down here next to the um, dipstick there is a little bracket holding a few things on so it's going to undo that. There's a washer on the back of it so don't let that fall on the floor because that would be a problemo. There's a little brass washer that fits around there, it sits on the back behind the bracket I've just taken off to space it away from the engine. Put it back in the engine for the moment so I don't lose it. Right, so I've just uh, lifted this little uh, connectory thing with all the spark plug wires out of the way, which is handy. I'm gonna try and get this off here as well. Because it says, oh God, that's the tightest oil filter cap I think I've ever come across. It says to undo the rocker cover before you do the camshaft, which I'm a little surprised at, but suits my purposes well, because I'm gonna be changing that anyhow. This is more 10 millimeters, I believe. Just need an extension doodah. Uh, I've got the long doodars, that's easier than extension doodars. The long doodar listing out of the way. Crack off quite easily. Considering this car is going to be 30 years old in a couple of months, this is coming apart very easily indeed. It's not high mileage, this car hasn't driven very far in its life at all. Now before I go any further, I am actually going to get the braking clutch and clean up around this engine because it's horrible. Where it's been leaking off the rocket gasket. Breaking clutch sign. By the way, I forgot to mention I did disconnect the battery first thing. So this is the result of a weepy rocker cover gasket. Everything looks horrible and manky. And so I'm gonna get a bunch of brake and clutch cleaner on this and give it a good old clean up. Try and make it look more presentable, but I'll do this before I take the rocker cover off because I don't want gunk getting into the engine. Yes, I did overfill um, this thing from the big tank of brake and clutch I've got sitting over there. I'm gonna get a bit of cardboard stick under there because it's making a mess on the floor. Our gunky sensor just there, give that a bit of a clean up and the uh, motor engine mount underneath it. What I'm seeing down there is more areas that need to be under sealed, uh, rust proofed as is, because um, yeah, that's more bare metal that needs to be protected. That I didn't see when I had it on the jacks in the driveway. Right, let's get back to taking this rocker cover off again. Now this should lift away. Ooh, what do you know? It does. What are the chances of that happening? What are the chances of that? What are the chances? And there is one very tired and not very rubbery feeling anymore. Rocker cover gasket just there. Let's put this to one side. But I'm gonna put some blue roll over the top of that so nothing nasty falls in the engine while we're working. because honestly, it would be just my luck to drop a nut or bolt down there or drop some gravel in there or something. You know, a passing aggregate lorry will have a load of sand and just dump it in there because that's just how my life works. So. Okay, wheel taken off, axle stand under the sill just in case, but Jack is doing the bulk of the work. The problem with these cars is that there's not many places you can actually jack them up particularly safely. So um, yeah, finding a place to stick an axle stand is tricky on this car. So right, what we're gonna do now is whip off some of this arch liner and get up inside there because we need access through here. Hopefully these are gonna come undone. Blimey neck. Was not expecting that to happen. Two of those screws are missing slash broken so we've got cable ties holding this on so we'll have to snip this out. And we can see the auxiliary belt and the timing belt cover which is all underneath us. We need to undo that little bolt up there which is holding the timing cover on. Ah! Did all my knuckles in at once then? Brilliant. Ow. This 
15 millimeter bolt we've got a socket on just there that is for the alternator and that means we can then slacken off this auxiliary belt and take that off take off these three 13 millimeter bolts and lift off this timing wheel oh my word that's tight oh, predictably very tight indeed i need to go and get a breaker bar and i've nowhere roughly to put it back on again go in with all of the uggers and some of the duggers and try and whack this thing off Ooh, that's easy. Off that comes. And I didn't order a new one of these belts, which is remiss of me, has to be said. So I think, oh, God, it's genuine Fiat. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe that. Do you know what? I might go and see if I can grab a genuine Fiat one before I put this back together this afternoon, because that would be really, really cool, wouldn't it? Right, now, with that last bolt out, because there's only one bolt left in there from previous work on the car, this sort of finagles out of there, but thought it doesn't either. Oh, can we get this off? Yeah, we can. That comes out. That is disgusting. Coming out wheel from that leaky camshaft. Sorry, rocker cover. Why do I keep calling it a camshaft? And this is disgusting from that leaky rocker cover. So the timing cover and that pulley removed, we are now down to the visible bare bones of the uh, timing belt itself. Now, I don't have the correct timing tool, timing locking tool, so I have marked up two positions on the lower uh, pulley and two positions on the back of the top upper pulley and then that means I can time it all back into those locations when I'm done so then I'll get a 13 millimeter spanner on there to slacken off that and butter being Robert's your father's brother off pops the timing belt bloody hell that's tight Oops, so that is now slackened off and off comes the timing belt keeping that unmoved and the car is in gear so the crankshaft at the bottom shouldn't be moving and there is the old old belt and that can go in the bin copyright mighty car mods 2015 do you know what i didn't buy a uh, tensioner and i thought one would come with the kit i will actually go and order one right now because that 100 percent needs to be replaced now the water pump how does that come out so here's the new water pump and there's even a new gasket in there you can see there there are four bolts that hold the thing in place and there it is on the front of the engine at the side and here it is on the engine all murky and i'm going to give this another clean up it's a little stiff actually but it feels quite smooth but good to change it while we're doing the belt anyway so let's give this yet more of a clean up so everywhere we go not only do we always take the weather with us we take the air braking clutch cleaner to clean up the area around whatever we're cleaning. I am anticipating a certain amount of mess when this comes undone. It's more 10 millimeters, because everything's 10 millimeters on this car. But yeah, so I've not drained the water system, so it's gonna be goopy. Right, so now this should pry off. He says, slightly frustratedly as it doesn't move as much as an inch. It's my small hammer. Ooh, there we go, there's water coming out. Okay, let's go down there. Okay, that tray is not big enough. I thought with it being quite half an engine bay, not that much would come out. I was seriously mistaken. It's still coming out. Oh God, it's everywhere. Mind you, to be fair, that does look really thin as far as coolant goes. It's pretty not a bad time to be changing the coolant anyway. Ah, okie dokie, well that's uh, one for the re recycling weigh-in box. I'll do a bit of cleaning up now. <laughs> okay, here is the gap, the hole in the side of the engine where the water pump is gonna go back onto. I'm just thinking I'm gonna put some sealant, smear that onto the gasket just to make sure. But look at the color of the coolant that's coming out. It's a little bit wee wee colored, mostly very clear indeed, which I think means this has got virtually no antifreeze in there at all actually. So it's rather lucky we've drained it out and it'll get a complete coolant change here we go right so there we go we've got ourselves a nice shiny new water pump which is actually as stiff as the old one to be perfectly honest but it's not brown and crusty so i'm guessing that's a good thing we've got our new gasket what comes with it so we'll whack it back into place down here and then we'll be done so i've put a very very light smear of um of gasket sealant on the actual paper gasket i'm not quite sure how good that uh 
original surface and the engine bay actually is. And quite usefully there is one of the four fixings of the peg with a, a nut on the end rather than a bolt as the other three are, which makes it easy to locate it in the engine bed. There we go. Right, the water pump is now in, which is a huzzah moment. Uh, we've not moved either of the pulleys top and bottom for the timing belt yet. However, what we have found though is that the timing belt, I didn't really think about it, didn't come with a tensioner as part of the kit, which is a bit of a, an oversight really. And now I've seen this one, it's actually got a rim of rust around the edge. So that is definitely something that's going to get changed. Um, so I've had to ring up um, JR, who I get my bits from usually. They don't sell, well, they can't get hold of the uh, tensioner separately. What they can do is a complete timing belt kit. So I'm going to take that one back, get a new timing belt kit, including the tensioner, and come back with that and some more coolant, obviously, in the morning. I'm also going to come back with the mission creep element of this particular build is getting to this front chassis leg. But well, now I've got the engine kind of partly apart. I'm going to bring back a couple of cans of built Hambo chassis uh, anti rust black to go and goop over this big front cross member, which I can see more clearly from this angle, because it doesn't look very pretty indeed at all. So right, I'm going to leave the car where it is for now, and then uh, go home and get some stuff, because it needs stuff. I'm a bit annoyed at myself for not being able to get a complete job done today, considering what a simple task this actually is. However, I've been beaten by a lack of parts. Of course, the other thing I can go home and get is the uh, whatever correct Allen size key is needed to go and do the oil change, because that obviously still needs to be done as well. That's a silly thing not to be able to do, isn't it? Right, join me again in a moment. Right, hello people of the internet, we're back again for the next day and I've returned with many toys. I've got myself a Gates Micro V built for the alternator. I've got myself an air filter because that one, that fell on the floor, looked a bit grim, grimmer than I expected to be honest. And of course I've got myself a timing belt this time, which has also got, let's check I've got it in here. Oh, not awful so far. Yes, we've got a tensioner because old one looked pretty scuzzy. Turned out I had it in the car long enough waiting to be fitted that they couldn't return it either. So I might have to pay a restocking fee on that one when it goes back because these are special order because it's a 1994 car. Anyway, I also brought some coolant, which was another fun game to play because go onto the Halfords website, put in this car's number plate, it tells you one kind of coolant go into the store and find the Punto or any Fiat with this 1.2 engine, it says use a different kind of coolant. So I rung up uh, my friend Vernon, who knows lots about Fiat's, and he said use that one. Oh, and finally, I also went and bought a 12 millimeter, um, what do you call this thing? I don't know, hexagon stubby melange thing. I'm going to call it a melange for no reason, <laughs> so that I can actually take out the sump plug. So we've got many things we need to be getting on with. Wow, how do you get these things out? Now, I do like all the Draper's tools, but they do make their plastic nubbins going into the tools way too hard. Right, I'm going to start by doing the, or trying to get the sump plug out, because that can be draining while I'm doing other things. Now, can I actually make it fall out of the car? He asks, not very optimistically. By doing other things, you can probably hear the microwave beeping in the background. That means eat my lunch. This is a lovely, shiny, new uh, drain tank I picked up this morning because I thought the other one's full of water. I'm not going to be able to use that one. Oh, I hope that didn't go down there. Right, let's lower this car down so that it can uh, drain properly while I eat my lunch. Right, it says now finished draining. When I got my uh, wire edge mini, someone had whacked that thing up so tight that in fact uh, it had taken thread out and it's held on with, uh, with silicon sealant and mastic. So that was uh, good times. Had to have a um, thread insert put into it in order to, to save it. That was good. All right, so not over tightening that. It's not the kind that's got a uh, wash on it, which is nice. Means I can't forget it. Now yesterday I didn't have the um, torque settings for the water pump. It's a whole 10 Newton meters, which is really not very much at all. The white came out so easily. Right, I just popped off the old timing belt tensioner and I thought, oh no, it's different to the new one because it's not got a middle bit in the new one. Fortunately, I realized that the old one has got a pop out middle bit. Whoops, a daisy. So you pop that back in there and there you're good to go. I have to say, I've not come across one quite like that before.
Right, now I'm going to do this bit barehanded because obviously I want to be nice and tactile on it and not mess anything up. So, I'm going to start off at the bottom and feed this down into the depths of the engine and around the crank pulley at the bottom. It should just slide straight on. I've been told repeatedly this is the easiest cam belt change on the planet. Well, there we go. That's all around there, so now we just get our 13 mil, tighten this up a wee bit. So it's tightening to 30 Newton meters to make sure it's nice and tight and not gonna go anywhere. That is now all in place. Our lines have not moved at all on the top pulley, so that's good. And nothing's moved at the bottom either, although the car is in gear, so it really shouldn't be able to. Right, and now the last thing, as always, that we do is to get underneath here, put a bolt on the crank pulley and see if it will turn. I will want to take out the gear though, because that's not gonna help otherwise. And, and the key thing here is that having turned it around a couple of cycles is that the white lines are still lining up in the same place when you get that timing mark at the bottom lined up in its original right place. So nothing's going out of sync, which is good. Right, before I fit the timing cover and it's one bolt, I'm going to do another quick clean up because everything is just so goopalicious. This body is so goopalicious. I don't want it to be goopalishing all over my untidy engine bay. I want it to be Super duper not goopalicious and disgusting, I want it to be super lovely. Right now, before I do battle with the alternator and the alternator belt and the, the crank pulley, I just want to make sure this thing does turn over without killing itself because that would be bad. It won't start though because the crank pulley has got the, the teeth for the crank position sensor to sense, so it's not going to fire up, but at least I'll know it's turning over without disaster. Well, it turns over okay. Right, now all I need to do in terms of mechanical stuff is refit this crank pulley and this new Gates Micro V-Belt. And there's not going to be a lot to see down here, so I'll just show you when it's done because it's just going a bit James Herriot at this point now because it's all underneath there and you can't really see anything. Right, so it's all now back together apart from the air box. The alternator belt is on thanks to a couple of 17 millimeter sockets and spanners and a big breaker bar to tension it all up. It's all in and all good. The car should now, if we just make sure it's knocked out of gear, this time when we turn the key, it should actually spring into life. If I connect the battery up. Battery connected, fingers crossed, here we go. Didn't explode. There we go. We've got a not dead car. Which actually sounds quite nice and smooth with its fresh coolant and fresh oil in there as well. Superb, I should probably open the door so I don't die. Brilliant. Well that's a job well done. Now, there's one more thing because there's always mission creep. You know I love a bit of mission creep. So I did bring over with me an extra little bit of Built Hamber Dynax, the sh chassis black extreme duty anti-corrosion wax, which we used all over the rest of the chassis of this car. Because with the access panel off underneath the arch and looking down through here, I noticed some areas which could really do with a bit more chassis blacking, which we couldn't reach from the original angle we had it on. So I've popped this up and did a bit of blackaging. That was actually the wrong can. That was the, the wrong Dynax. I wanted UB, which is the firm anti-corrosion wax. So take two. Right, now the only thing left to do is to snap the air filter back into place with the nice shiny new filter element popped inside there. And then all we've got to do then is put the wheel back on and tidy up this mess. But yeah, job jobbed. So we're done at last. And this has got to be perhaps the easiest car I think I've ever worked on. When I've never had to do a timing belt without the aid of timing tools or locking tools at all before. Just a bit of tip X just to double check and the thing just slides straight on. I and mean, honestly, Working on Fiat Puntos is perhaps my new favorite thing in the world. This is just such a simple game. Anyway, there was a certain amount of mission creep from a simple timing belt change. We've now done the alternator belt, the timing belt, the air filter is fresh, we've got new coolant, we've got new oil, we've got new oil filter, and we've even done a bit of additional, let's find a torch, 
Can you see down there? Additional wax oiling down the bottom of there when I had the access panel off. I need to go and do the other side now to make it match. I need to paint this uh, battery tray as well. There's always gonna be things to do, but things are definitely on the up for the little Punto. So that's all brilliant. This lovely little car is getting lovelier by the day. And I don't know if I mentioned it in a previous video, but the body shop that has got the Rover 420 GSI Tourer at the moment has got this car booked in for when that car comes home. This is going to follow it in there. And the, uh, and the dodgy patch of repair up in this arch is going to get done by them as well, as well as repairing this wheel arch down there. So this car is going to be absolutely lovely. The oldest Punto in Britain is going to soldier on and continue to be the oldest car and perhaps one of the best Mark 1 Puntos as well, because these things do rot like bilio. I mean, there's... The, I'm, I'm struggling for an analogy for something that will rot as badly as a Mark 1 Punto. And I can't come up with one, to be honest, because they are the benchmark for things that rot really badly. And this one, though, is an astonishing survivor with only, hang on, what mileage has it got on it? 57,000 miles on the clock. So that is just astonishingly low mileage for a car that's going to be 30 years old in about four or five months and is still in this remarkable condition. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure in maintaining the Mark 1 Punto. If it's been helpful, useful, entertaining, please hit like and indeed subscribe. If you want to grab yourself a very useful indeed battery jumpstart pack, hit the link in the description below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.